remember this Gibson and Garvey picture. Oh. Trammel, going through sliding drills in spring training. The picture of Jack Morris with the balls, those are all minor league balls and I strung them together with fishing line. That's a cool picture. Oh yeah, this is game action. I know um, the police couldn't prevent fans from running on a field. It was like this hazy October day that became hazier when they started burning police cars. They had the nucleus of a good team, and they started to gel in different ways. The excitement really started to build for some time in the future, and it turned out it was 84. Not 85 and not 83 either, but 84 is when it all came together. At the beginning of the 84 season, I had an idea of having a live tiger with up the middle. The main story was about how strong the Tigers were, as they say in baseball, up the middle. Catcher, short, center fielder, and second baseman. So we had Parrish and Whitaker, Trammell, and Chet Lemon posing. And Mr. Campbell, the general manager, okayed it. And sure enough, it was a little baby Tiger Cub, posed wonderfully. But then at the end of the session, Milt Wilcox came over and put his pitching hand into the tiger's mouth. I still have a job. The tiger didn't eat his hand. I think it was the third or fourth game of the year, uh, April 7th, 84. All of a sudden, I realized that Jack Morris is starting the season really well. So I go over to the first base side, and sure enough, he does toss a wonderful gem, and it's the no-hitter of the season. And he jumps into Lawrence Parrish's arms. That set the stage for the rest of the season. It's like, okay, guys, we are going to be this good. In the first 40 games, they won 35 games, lost five. They were off to the races and never looked back. Because of the way the Tigers started out that year, 35 and 5, wherever they went on the road in 84, they were a huge story. It was like the circus had come to town. It was also the year the Wave made its debut in North America, at least in a big way. There was so much energy every night at Tiger Stadium. Jack Morris giving me the bird. We were right next to the dugout. It was fair game. Willie Hernandez was a tremendous reliever that year, and so the award they gave him was called the Fireman Award because you came in and put out the fire. The reliever put out the fire, you know, bases loaded, one out. So she took Willie Hernandez in uniform out of Tiger Stadium and went to one of the uh, downtown firehouses and got his picture next to a fire engine with a fireman's hat on and an ax. Because it was so clear early that the Tigers were probably going to win the pennant that year, there was a lot of time to prepare and to get psyched up about the postseason.
This is the official scorebook that every writer would have, you know, had with them uh, during the whole season that year. Game after game, 162 games and uh, playoffs, and then here's, this would be the last game back here somewhere. So this would be the uh, game against San Diego when the Tigers uh, won the World Series. Attendance, 51,901. That's a big crowd. That's a lot more people that can get into Comerica Park these days. So here's uh, Gibson's home run in the eighth. You can keep score by following the player's progress around the bases. So there's a home run. There's a home run he hit in the first inning. And um, that's uh, basically uh, history in the making. We were prepared to go back to San Diego, but it was like, okay guys, get it done here in Detroit. That's Goose Gossage. He was the relief pitcher for the Padres, and he was a really big guy, and he was mean, he had a Fu Manchu mustache. And Goose Gossage just stared down Kirk Gibson. And then when he hit the home run, by covering these guys day in and day out, I know they're how they're going to turn, I know where they're going to be, and I'm just there waiting. And they don't disappoint. Mary's picture of Gibson being the wild man after his home run is really one of the most distinctive photos in the history of Detroit journalism. His uniform is torn from when he slid earlier and it's grass stained and it really captured all the exuberance that was going on at that moment. The celebration lasted for hours. Champagne, joy, cigars. This is the ultimate prize. This is the picture of Alan Trammell in the tunnel leading from the field into the clubhouse. Raises his hand with a glass of champagne and it's a tiger with bless you. I remember walking on the roof of Tiger Stadium. There was a access door and looking down at Michigan and Trumbull. You could see a police car upside down. I remember a motorcycle was on fire. It really looked like a battle had taken place. I knew then that it probably wasn't going to be a happy ending for what was going on outside the stadium as opposed to what had gone on inside the stadium. The uh, first headline after the Tiger win was great, like Tony the Tiger used to say, but that became inappropriate later on, especially after someone died. I don't remember what the second headline was, but it was a little more in keeping with both the fact that there had been this great win, but there had also been some uh, nastiness in the streets. It was the second day after the World Series. I never asked for player autographs, but that one was special. And I brought two copies, one for him and one for me. And I had him sign it for me. Mary, what a great time. Kirk Gibson, and we had no idea of what the picture would come to represent. The best in sports. When you play together as a team, what you can accomplish. Everybody has their strengths and their weaknesses, and you play to everybody's strengths, and that's what they did. <laughs>